This is chapter 17, video two. Let's launch. So today's learning objectives, we're going to cover uh, calculate the current and deferred income tax expense or benefit components of a company's income tax provision. So when calculating the uh, current and deferred income tax expense or benefit, uh, the first thing that we're going to be doing is adjusting the pre-tax net income for all permanent differences. And again, when we're doing the current portion, we do care about the um, about the permanent. I, and I want to clarify, because I think something I said in the first video may have been... Um, may have come across a little different than 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 what it should have in the current portion we do care about permanent differences but when we're talking about future differences deferred benefits or deferred um you know dtas dtls we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to i mean we're going to focus on solely upon the temporary stuff because remember one if it's permanent it's it's here it's gone it's done it's over with we don't have to mess with that anymore and so as a result of which it's over um, permanent differences, again, things that uh, appear on the income statement but not, or on the return, but not both. Um, you know, there's going to be some areas, for example, penalties. That is a financial component, but tax, they're not going to let you take a, def a deduction for it. Conversely, if you have a lot of uh, investments in uh, municipal bonds, they're, uh, you know, you're going <clears> to <throat> you're going to recognize that as income, but it's not going to show up on the tax return. Um, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, another thing, an item that will show up on the on the uh, on the um, financial statement that won't show up on the return, of course, is going to be unrealized gains and losses and trading securities accounts that uh, that you have to remove out. So those are those are the kind of things that you're going to be looking for in the um, in the permanent and then the temporary differences in that case, because, you know, of course, once they sell it. Then it's going to be uh, then it's going to be a, another difference. And that'll actually turn it into a primary difference, but because there won't be because it's uh, security will be sold. Um, so the company does not take permanent differences into account in computing DTA DTLs. I just said that, and then permanent differences in a company's effective tax rate appear as a part of reconciliation of its ETR to its statutory uh, U.S. tax rate. So uh, this is um, a common permanent differences that you're going to see when you're calculating your current. Uh, tax differences uh, between, um, you know, between uh, you know, on your current tax expense. And again, we've already talked about a, a whole host of these. Uh, probably the biggest one that we haven't talked a lot about are tax credits. We did get rid of that part of the class just due to time. Again, I would recommend looking at it because there's a whole host of different types of credits and uh, things that businesses can do that will reduce their tax uh, liability uh, and also actually allow them to do uh, good things for the company. So you might want to uh, get to know that stuff, especially. And in fact, I have actually have a buddy of mine who used to work at a big four, and that was his whole job was tax credits. Uh, he actually, you know, would travel around the, the country meeting with clients to get them to do the tax credit so they could get the best benefit out of that. Then the next thing you're going to do is identify all temporary uh, differences and carry forward amounts. <clears throat> You know, so, you know, they're going to arise in those in these four different instances. Um, you know, and I'm not going to go through them. You can read the slides. But basically, they're going to be periods. And if you take a look at, you know, I, I know Ultratax does this. They actually use this language where they say, you know, income reported on book but not for tax. Expenses reported on book but not for tax. Income on return, not on book, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And if you follow that language, it's going to be good. So I will not lie to you. There are some tax systems that do a better job of this than others. I think UltraTax does a pretty good job on this. I think UltraTax does very well um, to, to to make all this happen. But uh, you know, there there are some tax softwares that I've seen in the past that maybe the language is not as uh, as clear as it could be. Um, this is going to be some uh, c common temporary differences. <clears throat> Again, you know, most of the stuff we we haven't really talked too much about. What I do want to talk about is the accrued vacation pay. Um, you know, the, the rules on this generally are, so if you have accrued vacation pay and it's for the employees, that's one thing. But if it's, if it's accrued vacation for the executives, it gets treated completely different. And, uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure you understand that when you're going through it. And, and, and I've worked at a couple companies where they just kind of threw the tax return together and they just kind of threw things together and sent stuff in and they didn't pay too much attention to this. Some of the better companies that I've worked at did focus on this, and um, 
and and usually you talk to your corporate tax experts and those are the guys who are actually looking for this stuff in order to make sure that they get everything captured correctly um these are some additional ones uh warranty reserves <clears throat> obviously if you have a warranty reserve you're you're you know you're going to treat that different under tax than you are under book because uh you know warranty reserves are uh more of a financial accounting matter than uh than a tax matter uh then you also have uh, you know identif uh, so identifying taxable income different temporary differences taxable differences these are initially favorable to give rise to tax temporary differences taxable differences that generally arise you know and they give you some of the examples there Again, I'm not going to read for you, but that's that's how they how they work out. From a balance sheet perspective, a temporary a taxable temporary difference generally arises when the financial basis of an asset exceeds its corresponding tax basis, or the financial reporting of a liability is less than its corresponding tax basis. These will happen from time to time. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I mean it's 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 really taxpayer specific. So, I mean, I, I could give you some, some rules that have happened in some of the taxpayers that I've seen, but your taxpayers could be completely different. So this is where, you know, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back for a second. A small little complaint that I've had, and, and look, I'm an accountant, so, so one of the things we're very good at doing is complaining. Um, uh, you know, and I'm a military guy, and we're really good at complaining, so that, that means I'm, like, doubly qualified. But anyways... The, the, one of the complaints that I've had in the industry was, you know, a lot of people kind of do this, what I call monkey see, monkey do. They, they, they take a look at what happened last year. They kind of do the same thing this year. They don't necessarily know why. Um, they're either It's either because they've been told by somebody uh, who, you know, like, for example, if you're a staff and they come and, 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 you know, you take a look at the last year's tax trend. Say you're kind of a senior staff level, and, and I don't mean senior accountant, but I'm saying like you're maybe a year off from being senior and you're preparing tax returns, oftentimes the staff doesn't take the time to understand why they're doing the stuff that they're doing. All they say is, look, you know, in the last two years with the tax returns, we always do this adjustment for accrued vacation, and so we're going to do it here too. In, in my opinion, um, as a staff, that's okay, because, in, in, and I haven't really talked to you guys about this uh, yet. I mean, normally, normally when we have the class and in-class session, one of the things that I'll do is I'll have, you know, I, I, the first class. You know, I mean, let's be honest. When you show up to most college universities and you have the first class, they're not really getting into stuff on the first day. They're kind of administrative. This is how you do the class, blah, 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 so on and so forth. I began to realize that a lot of my students really wanted to know um, – more about the industry and what it takes to be successful and i used to talk about hey if you if you go into tax and you're going to and you want to progress these are the things you need to know and one of the things that that we always talk about is um as a staff your primary job is to know the software if you get to know the software and you do this and you can do the software very well without making a lot of mistakes you'll move from staff to senior uh with relative ease and it usually takes about two years, maybe three years in order to do it. You know, if you're really you're a fast whippersnapper, you'll be able to pick up uh, the, the software pretty fast. But if you're if you if you take a little extra time, then it could take three years. And, and I'm not talking about any intern time. So if you if you have intern time, that sometimes will make it to where you move a little faster simply because, you know, again, you know, the software, you know what you're supposed to be doing. You know, the initial stuff in order to get stuff set up. And as a result of which. You're going to be successful. But when you move from senior to supervisor, that's when you need to know more about the law. OK, in order to go from senior to supervisor, because they're expecting as a supervisor, you understand the reasons why we're doing this sort of stuff. And that's what that's when I think it is. But again, if you're one of those people who likes to dig into the books, you're going to you're going to have a good grasp on that as a senior very quickly and you're going to rise fast on that. I I was told as I was told I told this in a previous video. I was highly uh uh acclaimed for my tax research skills. The problem was I was still a staff. <laughs> and so I still needed to demonstrate that I knew how to use the software. Once I knew the software and I once I was demonstrated that I could use the software comfortably, once I got to senior, I was going to rock it right up because I already knew that next three-year step process in order to be able to get to the point where I could be very successful with that. And so that that in and of itself is, is something that needs to be uh, examined by you as, as you're going through your process. So <clears throat> again, 
you know, maybe in the first couple of years, you're going to be doing a little bit of monkey see, monkey do. But, you know, as you start progressing and trying to get into that supervisory role, that's when you really have to start understanding why we're doing this stuff. And so that's why you have to go back and do your reviews and, and, and understand that. So anyways, sorry for the ramp, but that's kind of uh, kind of the way it is. So uh, deductible temporary differences, uh, you know, you could have a temporary difference that is usually unfavorable that gives rise to a uh, deductible temporary difference. Uh, and there's going to be some examples down there. Uh, I won't uh, won't force you. I won't read it to you there. Um, from a balance sheet perspective, a deductible temporary difference generally arises when a financial reporting asset is less than a corresponding tax basis or the financial reporting basis of a liability exceeds its tax basis. And that's a future, uh, you know, the future tax benefit associated with the deduct deductibility of temporary differences recorded on the time balance sheet as a deferred tax asset. So basically, what, what, what does this mean? My depreciation is faster under tax than it is under, um, under book oftentimes. It can sometimes be the reverse. I, I've seen a couple times where they've said, look, we bought this computer. We don't expect it to last more than two years. And, and this was a company that, that, that said, look, we buy our computers and we, we, we change everything over about once every two to three years. So we just go ahead and write off in two years. It's an estimate that they use. I think it's aggressive, but, but that's the way that they did it. Uh, in those cases, uh, computers, which usually depreciate over five years under, under uh, tax rules, that's going to depreciate where you're going to go. It's going to go through really fast for book, but it's going to it's it's not going to go that fast for tax. And that, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, that's that's how it'll end up working out. So then you're going to compute the ink of the current income tax expense benefit. So ASC 70 defines current tax expense benefit, the amount income tax is paid payable for a year as determined by applying tax provisions of the enhanced and uh, of the enacted tax law to the taxable income or excess of deductions over revenues that year. Um, the major component of the company's current expense tax benefit is current tax uh, income tax liability or refund from its current year operations. So there could be some of that that ends up happening. You know, maybe maybe it's one of those things where we did estimated payments and we said, hey, we estimate that your tax liability is going to be, you know, a million dollars this year. Comes back and then and find out it's only eight hundred thousand. They get a two hundred thousand dollar refund. What'll end up happening is, uh, you, you it, it it can affect this in that way. So um, you know, so you know that there's pretty much not much more to add on to that as far as like when it refers to current tax benefit. So determine the ending balances on the uh, uh, balance sheet for uh, DTA DTLs. So the different deferred income expense or or benefit portion of a company's income tax profession, uh, provision reflects the change in its company's DTAs or DTLs um, relate to uh, current operations. Okay. So, um, you know, and then the deferred tax a a accounts provide investors and other interested parties a measure of how the expected company's uh, income tax related cash flows, inflows, outflows, resulting from book to tax differences or temporary in the nature of the, of the carryovers like NOLs. So that's what it's all about here. Um, remember, this chapter, we're not talking about tax. I mean, we are talking about tax, but the end user is not always just the client. In that case, it could be the investors in the client. And as a result of which, we have to make sure that we're recording these things correctly. Now, now I know a lot of people think of this, and the first thing to think is, well, it's, it's got to be only investors. Banks are going to do this, too. Um, you know, we have a lot of clients that actually come to us and say, we need we need uh, audited financial statements because I'm taking my statements to the bank and the bank saying that they don't believe anything that's on the tax return because it hasn't been done correctly by the previous few, few people. We bring on board their tax work. We bring on board their audit work. We get everything set up straight and then uh, life goes on. ASC 740 takes a, a liability or balance sheet approach to the tax uh, to the computation of the deferred tax expense or benefit. Computations are based on the change in cumulative differences between the financial accounting adjusted basis of an asset or liability and its corresponding tax basis from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So that's how you do it. I mean, I, there's not much more that, uh, that we have to say about that. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. I want to say thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.